Hi, how are you? This is Dr. Tamaris Maria Grossman, and this is the Mindfully Integrative Show. And thank you so much for joining in. Today, we have a mindful chat with a really wonderful gentleman, Roger Pollard, and he will be able to kind of talk to you. He's a teacher, he's an advocate, he's a motivator, and um, he has a lot to discuss with uh, how he can kind of help you get into your right mindset and transition. So thank you so much, Roger, for being on the show. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to just share some thoughts and have a moving dialogue with you. Yeah, I love it. I, I, I'm excited when I meet different guests and individuals because I, I want to know what their point of view in this integrative health space that I call it, but really a holistic um, point of view from a conventional model or just what they use in addition to their own health journey. So kind of where did this come um, for you um, that you know you wanted to be on the podcast and talk to individuals and your health journey? Well, I was, um, of course, I'm a high school teacher and I was a football coach for 14 years. And, and what I, what I realized is it's not really, it's not really about what people do as much as how they do, you know, like I, I tell, used to tell my players and I, I tell my students right now, you can't change how you feel, but you can change how you act and how you mm -hmm. act will change how you feel. So, um, you know, just, just getting out there. And as a teacher, I think the, the most important thing for our youth isn't the material covered, but the, the, the ability for the adult in the room to get them motivated, right? To get them in the proper state of mind so that they can receive information. And uh, it's just something that I love doing, you know, just sitting on here with you on this podcast. This doesn't, it's not about yielding a, uh, a paycheck, you know, so to speak, but just sharing a little bit more of what we wish, some of the change that we wish to see in the world. And, and sometimes, you know, and we, we've all done it. We've been sitting in a movie or we're listening to someone talk and something resonates with us. So the more we can communicate about the positive ways and the positive benefits that, that different action can take in our lives and make, you know, someone's life or, or someone's day just a little bit better. I, I really feel joy from that. So um, uh, that's why I guess I started that journey and, and, and it matriculated into writing books and, and giving motivational speeches and talks. Just writing books is not a little nothing and to motivate other people. I mean, you obviously have had, um, you're, you're a coach, a football coach, a teacher, but what got you into kind of getting into that motivational point? What was there? Was there a turning point in like your life or was there anything in negative or positive that kind of transitioned you to, to, to say, you know what, I really want to make a difference in this way. Um, well, I mean, like we all have, you know, negative and positive and negative experiences throughout our lives, you know, mm -hmm. uh, um, but, you know, for me, I've just always been that motivator um, with from from me being a player at, uh, at in high school and in college. And then and then again, that's where I got into uh, coaching football. Uh, I, I loved it. It was a part of my day, a part of my daily routine, simply because, you know, when we're in the A.C., and I think everybody suffers from this, we will say, okay, I need to do this. I need to eat right. I need to start mm -hmm. exercising. I need mm -hmm. to, I want to lose weight. I want to do this. And there's, there's, there's a big difference in what people say and what we're, we're willing to do. Mm -hmm. Right. And I've always, just as a coach and as a teacher, you know, if I go into my freshman, my freshman uh, classrooms and I ask them how many of them want to go to college, everybody raises their hand. But then when I ask them how many of them are studying for the SATs, how many of them are studying for the ACT, how many of them are doing, you know, they have a 30 second uh, a, a block that they just do review, not homework, not something that's assigned, but something that, that you are doing for you to put yourself in the pot because you say you love yourself. How much are you sacrificing for yourself? Mm -hmm. And I, I've just always found it interesting. I don't know that where we will always say more than what we're willing to do. You know, we're, and I, I tell my students, the first person we lie to is ourselves. So, you know, with that, it kind of led me on a, a little bit of a journey and, 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 you know, better, better honing my skill to speak to somebody to get them in that right mindset. Cause like I said before, it's, it's, it's really honestly, like we all know, like we can sit down right now, we can take a deep meditative breath in and out and we can say, what's one thing I need to do? And you know it right now, like, you know, you need to clean your room and you know, you need to do the laundry, you know, you need to do a workout and, and the, the difference between the action and the thought, 
You know, so what I tell people is if you look at the word uh, belief, it's be life. Like what you believe is what you do. You can't tell yourself what you do. We have to, as human beings, take a step back every now and then and look ourselves in the mirror and say, and just, and just observe ourselves. And off of your observation of self, you can really see what you believe. And, and, and we need to course correct. You know, uh, mm -hmm. we, we, need to, we need to have that deep reflection with ourselves, not every single day, because you'll drive yourself crazy, because we're not perfect. But once every three months, once every six months, sit back and say, okay, these are the things that I see. How do I want to correct them? And now make your goals. And now with goal setting, uh, uh, come up with your objectives. You know, come up with the list of things that you want to do on a daily basis that you know will make you feel good because you're sitting down and you're saying, These, this is what I want. So um, it's um, well, with me in, in, act in putting some actualization behind that thought is, is every three weeks in my, my high school classes, I give uh, a motivational talk, motivational speech, just um, I'm giving clear and clear cut definitions of words. You know, my, my favorite example for my, my students is, you know, do you love your mom? You know, do you love your parents? And, and everybody says, yes. Well, now I ask you, what is love? Mm. What's love? Everybody's, oh, no, I love my Okay, what is love? What does that mean? Because, you know, words, words are used to define certain words, but, but I, I think we, we share these words but we're not specific about the, the, the definition behind it. So I, what I tell my students is love is sacrifice, you know, and if you love yourself, you're willing to sacrifice for yourself. Um, how much are you holding yourself accountable because the first person you lie to is yourself? So, um, you know, in that, in seeing kids really, really, really accepting some of the responsibility of, uh, of their actions and, and of course I'm high school you're, I'm adolescence everybody likes That's, I mean it's such an important mind. time I mean you're mentoring mm -hmm. these individuals that may have never even had that conversation right um whether so this is part of their health there's a psychological health and they're meant you're mentoring them into building a future for themselves and some of them have not may not even had those conversations with their parents and no, then building I, well, love morals and mm -hmm. having the that's really big um, and I mean, it's just, it shows through, um, in, in a, you know, uh, motivational, um, call it, you know, a psychological mental health component of this, you're helping these individuals see a part of themselves. They probably have never even been able to understand and, and the actionable and, steps are just them de getting there. Yeah. And it's well, the, the huge thing right now we're, we're seeing a lot of, um, labels and identity like I, I have a lot of kids who come to me and ask me you know ask me questions about things that I, I feel like it's not your time to really start trying to classify with a specific label like mm -hmm. right now at this point in your life your your who you are is based off of what you value so come on let's sit back and let's start talking about values what do you value so like we said before you're talking about how you love your parents. Well, what do you do? You know, I, I, I give them, you know, little homework assignments on, on, you know, different Fridays. Go home and just wash the dishes without someone telling you. You know, look, put love in action. And, and now once we've been, once the kids are better able to define the specific meanings behind a, a virtue mindset, behind, uh, behind words and 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 not what they mean through what they say but what they mean through their action um you know i, I get a lot of positive feedback from that you know that like, like oh man coach uh I, I walked up to my mom and i gave her a hug and i told her i loved her and i cleaned the house before she got here and i just walked away like you said and she followed me into my room like is everything okay and it was just, <laughs> you know <laughs> you know because you know if you have an adolescent teen if they're cleaning up and, and give you a hug and say, I love you, then you're like, they're okay, like, oh, no, want? something <laughs> yeah, happened. Yeah. yeah. Did you get in trouble in school? And, and I think that's that's uh, there's there's a there's a feeling that we're living wrong. If that's the way, if that's the first thing we think when someone pours into us a little bit, when somebody gives us something, yeah. when somebody sacrifices and gives you a little bit of love, now it's all of a sudden they want something. 
I, I think uh, what it is, is you're trying to transition that negative thinking to like that positive thinking. You're really putting that perspective. Cause like you said, the woman's like, did just something go wrong? Mom's like, what's wrong? And mm -hmm. I think it just keeps coming to like, it's okay to be good, you know, or to try yeah. to do these altruistic uh, events. And it's nice that you're, uh, you know, acknowledging that for these individuals, because I think teens are probably even the hardest above all to like, come get through. I would say yeah. as a healthcare provider, when I see my, um, teen, mostly it's, uh, women, t girls, women, then, um, having those conversations. Cause moms will be like, she needs help. She needs help. Like, right. Let's see what's going on. And they don't want to talk, you know, and right. to discuss these steps to help. But once you kind of look at their behaviors and what, and you're talking to their actions, that's awesome. That's really well, how, you, how you view the world defines the world you see. You know, if you change the way you view things, I think things you change. So with me getting into motivation, I, I wanted, I didn't want to focus so much on action as much as like, who are you as a person? You know, who are you as an individual? So I, I, I defined it from the big five personality traits and, and telling kids, what is conscientiousness? What is agreeableness? What is neuroticism? What is, what is openness to, you know, what are these personality vectors that kind of, that kind of shape how you view the world? And then from a sociological approach, how important is, you know, family? I, I, I tell all of my students, you know, family is older than religion. You know, everybody talks about God or Christianity or, or whatever, but the family and the, and the social, that social structure and unit is, is, is older than anything that we have built. Right. So, anything, whatever that family is, their village family. I mean, their yes. unit. Yes. I think well, I that think, connection, that quality mm -hmm. connection has shown through the research, how it's so important. And when people, when children, teenagers feel like they're not connected yes, with and, their and family well, at, at the base, I, at the base that, that it actually I, will affect them long-term. I get a I get a lot of kids. Of course, you know there's there's all kinds of homes, and and what I tell my my students, is especially because really honestly, in this day and age, the majority of them come from broken homes. Yeah. You know whether you know this happened or that happened or what I, what I try and tell the kids. You know I have a best friend who never grew up with his his dad. He never knew his dad. So, um, right now at this point of his life, as a father, that is the most important thing for him. Like he's picking his kids up, he's doing this so he can, we can always choose. Yeah, we always have a choice when we're looking at a specific situation and he could be, he could be, you know, depressed about not having that relationship with his father as a child. Or you can say, because I went through this, when I am a father, I am going to be the best father that I can be. Like we always have a choice in a situation. We may not love the consequences, but we may not love what the choices are, but there's always a choice. So giving them the definitions of family and community and togetherness, giving them, you know, it's uh, so faith, family. Yeah, yeah just, that that is a really, I mean, I, I don't know if you know it, but this like community and connection are like utmost in the whole health approach. Um, yes. people do not realize that it's not just the mental health, the spiritual, you know, that connection and quality connection, whatever it is, you're probably part of their connection too. Yes. That is really part of their healthcare because people, when they feel alone, I mean, the research shows when they feel alone or they feel abandoned or like not able to get their message across to someone to listen, they will get sicker. Well, and, and we, like, we know this as well. The, yeah. the best way to change your hormonal state or how you feel is not by receiving something, but actually giving something some, to someone else. You know, being, being the recipient of a grateful act and really right. thinking about that and, and feeling that. So, right. um, you know, having those conversations about how your particular representation on what we do in society in terms of your job or in terms of what you have, that's not specifically who you are. So who are we? You know, so that's what I, I, I went out and I tried to define in, in book one, uh, where, you know, a, a lot of my students read it and they were like, I thought it was a motivational book, but it was, it was giving me a better understanding of who I was, you know, and like, how can we act? How can we go somewhere if we don't know from where we're traveling? So, uh, you know, my, my big issue, 
uh, with with what we're doing in terms of the social media craze is everybody is aiming at other aspects of other people instead of really being able to fine tune, okay, who am I from a family perspective, faith perspective, friends perspective, what is what what play does uh, uh, social media and technology have uh, on us and uh, faith, family, friends, oh, and, and my education. Uh, uh, those five components with the temperamental components knowing what that is so i can i can identify who i am and find more value in um in who i am because uh you know if you gave me a million dollars when i was five years old i would have spent it on pokemon cards if you spent it if you gave it to me when i was 18 i would have spent it in the club and if you give it to me right now when i'm 40 i'll put it in real estate or stocks you know, right you'd, you'd have a totally you know? different view but you learn you had to learn you had to be mentored yes. and understand the value of, of a dollar value of time right so, totally different. so every every experience good or bad has a has a blessing in it you know so what i tell my my, my students is the the word sin is a archery term and it means to miss the mark well the best way that you can shoot an arrow is to connect the negative and positive moments of your life step back from that and now aim at your new goal on the horizon and use both of those things because now your string from your air, your bow and arrow is stretched out as far as it can I go. I love that. And aim and go and shoot. Are you going to miss? Maybe, you know, well, of course. Like, did, and I, I, if we had the attitude we had as adolescents when we were learning how to walk, we would be worried about our diaper. We would be worried about falling. We'd be worrying about what we're wearing and how we look. But at two years old or three years old, at whatever age you learned how to walk, you didn't care about anything other than walking. You didn't care about anything other than your goal and your aim. So, so stop getting tied into, oh, ho hum, or even shying away from the negative moments in your life. You know, sometimes we just have to face up to it, understand it, and then positively, and it, it, and, and, and with that separation. You're, you're better able to courageously move forward. And we, we know that changes your um, uh, your hormone release in terms of cortisol and, and dopamine. You know, dopamine is released when you feel like you are willingly accepting and moving forward towards a challenge. Yeah, you, yeah. Same experience, but if you feel like that experience is being put on you and you don't want to do it, now cortisol and stress hormone is released and and that makes all the difference in the world. So again, if you change the way you see your situation or your predicament and look at it as an opportunity and something that you are willingly moving forward to conquer, um, you can win. So I, I, and, and I guess my last example is if you look at the castle system, you know, if you have your king, who entertains the king is the fool. The, the fool or the jester, well, why are they so closely related? Because in order for you to become a master of any new skill, you have to be willing to risk that first step. The first time you do it, you're going to be mm. a fool. The fool goes off into the unknown. Everybody's screaming, hey, no, whatever. And because you have an inner idea, because you have an inner, an inner drive to rip through the fabric of reality and conquer something, you continually you go into the forest where it's darkest and you you're able to return back to the village return back to the community with some new knowledge and that's when you that's when you become king so interesting because so. you're saying the fool you know and the irony of there is it's like people would think that they are a fool and they're doing something not correct but you're saying that you can change it and do the perspective of making you know that mistake and then learning from it instead of just giving up Right. Well, it, and I don't even want to say correct. I want to be more like deviants, you know, like, yeah. like, like our, it's, it's because if we, if we look at the landscape, if, if all we do is what we've done, then we never grow. Mm -hmm. And if we only, if, but if we're only about growth, then we have no rules. So it's always an ebb and flow. It's always a mixture of it's, it's almost like the yin and yang and trying to get to that middle line right. where, there are some rules that, like I, I tell my children today or now, I'm like, look, you have to understand there's two, there's two things. One, the rules are there for a reason. 
whatever rules they're there, people died, people sacrificed, people people were put in all kinds of situations to to be to make these rules. And none of these rules, you have to follow them. But because we want change, innovation, and growth, I will say that you know rules are made to be broken as well. So I, I tell my children now is this look, if you break a rule you better have a very good rational, logical explanation as to why you did it. Mm. I don't want to hear, I don't know. Or, I don't <laughs> want to hear, <laughs> I don't want to hear, I know. Like if you, if we sit down, because I, I, the, the point of me as an educator is not to give you information. My, the point of me as an educator is to, is to hone your ability to think and, and speak. If you can think and speak, you're dangerous. You can do anything in this world. That's the most important thing. So it's not about getting the answers right because no one gets all the answers right. If no. you always get all the answers right all the time, you're not pushing yourself, you're not challenging yourself, you're not growing yourself. So it's not about right or wrong. It's about your ability to, to take in the landscape, analyze it and, and articulate it. And as, as, as you hone that skill and you're better able to truthfully speak about what you see, um, you, you know, the, the world is yours, you know? So um, it's always a battle. It's always a challenge, especially dealing with high school kids, but I, it's I not, love all, what it's you're not talking. for high school kids. I think you have so much, oh my God, you have to be on again. We have to have more conversations <laughs> about uh, this, you know, how much you can motivate and, and maybe even a little bit webinar of some sort. Um, yeah. I'm putting a collective book together um, of the Mindfully Integrative series. So I'd love for you to just put your story in there too at some point. Um, okay. But yeah. yeah. Definitely. Um, Definitely. And I want those listening to you, how can they reach you? And what is your book? Can you please say your name of the book? Your book? Um, yeah, my, my book uh, is, and I wasn't shy with the title. I named it the book everyone should read. Um, it, it's a three book motivational series. The first one is the book that everyone about. should read. Is that the you? book that everyone should read? That oh, I love it. Yes. That's great. That's great. <laughs> That's really catchy. Uh, great. So, uh, uh, defining you from a, from a sociological and a, a psychological standpoint. And then my second book, which I'm going to release in November is a continuation of that. And that is the, the three virtues that I think we should all focus in on is courage, love, and discipline and courage has everything to do about your health. How intentional are you about what you eat? How intentional are you about your sleep? And how intentional are you about your exercise? And then, uh, you know, just, and so that's courage, love and discipline. They're all broken down into practical steps. So uh, my website is uh, www.motiveandmotivation.com. Um, and and I, I really like to focus on the physiological changes uh, that take place. Like everybody thinks of exercise as, washboard abs or losing weight what, what what exercise does for your body for your mind and your brain for you know after a 15 minute walk bdnf uh uh is is secreted into your your blood and we know what that does from a brain perspective in terms of increasing white matter and gray matter yeah. white matter is your your brain's ability to communicate gray matter is like it's your brain itself so um, what we're seeing in terms of meta meditation, what we're seeing in terms of grounding, you know, like if, if there's any problem that we have in our society, it's that we don't, we don't pay attention enough to our relationship with nature, nature, our relationship. Uh, I, was, I just, I just and, talked about, I talk about that quite often is grounding in, in just putting your feet on the grass, like, or whatever, oh. whatever floor. And it's, it's just, I mean, even if you can't, someone, someone tells me that they don't have the opportunity because their environment doesn't give them that, which I can give them that I could, I can understand, but hopefully at least on the weekends to try to get there or at least on the grass, you know? Yeah. And well, and the, the crazy thing is with this, you know, researching and doing the information or, or getting the information from my third book, which is yeah. really going into the science of why is it important to sleep? What, what happens when we sleep uh, or the proper amount? You, the, the scientific data is in, you know, it, it is measurable. It's not something, it's not faith. It is standing outside barefoot in the grass makes, uh, it, it decreases your cortisol levels, your stress levels. Yeah. And um, if you're sore or anything like that, it, it moves lactic acid out of you. So 
all of these things are kind of new and they're, 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 they're coming out and they're getting a lot of, of attention now. So, um, but it's the relate how important are relationships, not in terms of uh, what you can gain, but the, the, the reciprocal nature of a relationship, what you the give and take from, from two, two human beings uh, and in a relationship with the divine, a belief in something where I say, if you're agnostic, that means you believe in nature. So, so go out and, and do some grounding and be around trees and things of that nature. So, um, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's I love me. it. But I love it. I love your, is that your that tip from, um, as I say, kind of leaving a little tip for the day. Do you have anything that uh, you like? I mean, you've already been given uh, such a wealth of knowledge, but is there one uh, last daily uh, thing that you'd like to leave with the audience? 100 percent my 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 go-to is everybody if, if you have a sports background everybody knows about momentum right like if you've watched a football game before you've seen a team that was down by 28 points and you're almost about to shut it off and then all of a yeah. sudden they come back and win it or a basketball game or something of that nature um so momentum is real so i tell everybody have because in order for you to be in a, med a meditative state you need four areas of your brain to fire you need your basal ganglia, which is go or no go. You need your occipital lobe. Uh, uh, that that when you if I if I scratch a, a chalkboard, when you see it and you feel an action, Senses, and then yeah. two parts two parts of your prefrontal cortex, um, fight or flight part, your amygdala, and then the then just your your lateral prefrontal cortex, which is you can't lie to yourself. You can't say that one of my goals is to open the door. It's not enough of a challenge. So my thing is every morning try and start off with momentum and, and have a have a two or three thing uh, that you do every morning to to la to stack up wins. Win, win, and win. So what I, I, I say, you know, get a 10 minute meditation in, get a 15 minute walk in and end every shower off or, or even your morning shower with it being cold. Uh, um, Cause it's, uh, you can look at the Wim, Wim Hof breathing method or, but we know cold exposure and what it does. We know meditation and how it, uh, how it affects and grows your pre areas of your prefrontal cortex that give, that have specifically to do with focus. Our oh, social fact. media yes. craze, yeah. social media, craze, like everything you do, you're training your brain. So, so all of our social media networks in, in the short attention spans, it is changing what your brain and how your brain thinks. So just those three things can get you moving into, and there are, there are mornings where I don't feel like getting up and working out for my 30 minutes in the morning. I say, do it in the morning. Anytime you build a habit, because if it's the first thing and you go, now you can get that positive dopamine spike. And now before you turn on the news, before you turn on the radio and the negativity from society comes in, you are already on fire. You know, every, every performance, if you go see Beyonce, she's warming up for that. If you go and see a basketball player, we warm up before games. What do you do to warm up for the game of life that we approach every time that we, I mean, every time we open our eyes, but every time we go out the front door, you know, we are at the mercy of, you know, some of the most you know, horrific things or great things, get our, get ourselves, what are you doing to consciously put yourself in a positive, motivated state every morning? Because you love yourself, you know, because, because you do not, because of the words, but because of the actions you're willing to take to get yourself in a motivated state. You don't get motivated. You don't stay motivated. You get motivated. What are you actively doing every morning to do it? Three simple things. And the cold shower at the end is, it's a challenge where you, you, you get a cold shower. Yeah, the cold shower is some people it. don't like, but I, I tell people yeah. like, even if you could put cold, cold water on your face, even mm -hmm. a little bit in the day, that's always yeah. a, a nice little kind of jolt. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, the, think back to your life. The, the biggest lessons that you've had in your life, a, a lot of the times come from negative experiences, come from times in which like, like uh, uh, the ch champions, Excellence withers where there is no adversary, right? You you cannot the, the the best feelings you have is when you when you face a challenge. So what is that challenge? I, I think a, a, a ending off the culture or ending off a morning uh, hot shower with a thirty second cold shower that is <laughs> that's a, it's a challenge for me. So um, yeah. you know seeing yourself on the other side of it and and it what it does for 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 um, 
uh, focusing in your your the, the focal point of your brain, the 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 medial yeah. strip. It strengthens. You get the you get you strengthen every little bit. I mean, it's a muscle too, right? And it, and the yeah. neuroplasticity in the body and the brain needs uh, to grow, so it needs to change. And you know, yeah. we can only do that with a little bit of quietness. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So I really appreciate you being on. Um, can you again just uh, say the um, how that people can reach you at your website? Yes. Um, you you can. There are, there are two ways. I do a little seven minute um, uh, podcast with motive and motivation. So on my website, www.motiveandmotivation.com. If anybody has a question or anything of that nature, I I answer those and I give a synops- synopsis of of my book. Um, of all three books, I have a few football books out, but really just trying to have a running dialogue and conversation with people and, and open up opinions and, and conversations. And, and if, if someone listened to this and they're, they're, they're driving along to work and they're a little bit happier, they're, they're, they're feeling a little bit better, you know, that's, that's, every, that's, that's the best value in the world. I love you know, it. I think we, love it. We, we mistake worth with price, but I think the most valuable thing on the earth is air and it's free. So, you know, true value has nothing to do with, with, with money it has to do with the natural things, with the feeling of the sun, the, the sun, the rays of the sun on our skin and, and being able to understand that every day that we are on this earth is a blessing. There are more people in the earth than on the earth. And it doesn't matter what your situation is. Somebody in the earth will trade with you in a heartbeat. Doesn't matter what you have, you know, doesn't matter what you're going through. There's somebody in a grave right now that would say, I will take your spot ne- like yesterday if you want to give it up. So um, extract the lessons and blessings from every experience that we have in this, on this earth and, and be the change that you wish to see in the world. I love it. Thank you so much for that. Those beautiful words. I think we, and that note, let's, I'll end it with that. And thank you guys for uh, joining in today on this mindful chat. And I um, will have all the information on the show notes. And like I said, make sure you find a mindful way each and every day. So thanks again and have a good rest of your day.